At this place in history, we're in Cornwall with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. We're going to talk about William Slade, who was one of the very early influential Vermonters in Congress, especially in regards to abolition. So I think we should go back to the studio and learn all about this guy. William Slade was really a man of letters, so I brought a lot of letters with me, written material that talks about his life. He was a lawyer, but entered politics very early, or civil service as it were, and he, he served on the state level before moving on to the national level. And so which book do we want to open first well, let's then and get into? This beautiful leather-bound volume here, because okay. it's the one period piece that I have. He was Secretary of State in the 1820s. Mm -hmm. He got very interested in the state's history, and as Secretary of State, he was responsible for all the documents that found our state. And so he started collecting all of these letters, laws, papers of the first republic, and then later the state, transcribed them, wrote commentary about them, and published them in this single volume. He was elected to the um, Congress of the United States in the 1830s. And if we remember, our history was going on in the 1830s was the abolition movement. And there was this whole question about um, free soil. And so as new states were added to this rapidly expanding country, would those states be free, free of slavery, or would they be slave states? And so he was very much uh, in involved in that debate. This is a modern, modern-ish binding of speeches by famous Vermonters. This is a speech that was uh, done on December 23rd, 1835, called The Subject of the Abolition of the Slave Trade Within the District of Columbia. If you'll indulge me, I just want to read a it. sentence, <laughs> and it's probably the most famous sentence from uh, this speech. Sir. I cannot stand here as a freeman without declaring in the face of this house and of the world that the right to hold men as goods and chattel subject to sale and transfer at the will of a master should cease and be discontinued instantly and forever. Very few congressmen had the guts to just stand up and just say it. Everyone right. talked around the subject and ultimately the Congress passed a gag order and the gag order said that we, we will not debate slavery on the floor of the House anymore. Hmm. It made Slade mad enough that he got around the subject. So he said, we have all these petitions saying we need to eliminate slavery in Washington, D.C. I want to create a committee to address the petitions. It expanded the gag order, so they weren't allowed to talk about slavery at all. So this was really the first use of a gag order in U.S. Congress, and it was saying you can't talk um, about slavery. I mean, ultimately, he was defeated um, and, and voted down, um, but a great voice for the complete abolishing of slavery. Did he live to see that happen? Unfortunately, he didn't. He died in 1859, right before the Civil War broke out. Was Congress then the end of his public service career? I think it was really the end of what he saw as his influential public service career. Um, he did serve two terms um, as governor of Vermont in the 1840s, and then he retired from public service. At this place in history,